Dear learners and listeners, I am Anita Devraj and today my topic of discussion is going to be science and scientists of medieval India. During the medieval period, science and technology in India developed two facets. One concerned with the already chartered course of earlier traditions and other with the new influences which came up as a result of Islamic and European impact. We will discuss in some detail about these developments in this particular program. Now after hearing me, I am sure you will be able to discuss the educational practices that emerged during the medieval period with your friends. You will also be able to trace the developments in science and technology in medieval India and list some well-known scholars in the field of science and technology and their works during this particular period. As you know, the medieval period marks the coming of Muslims in India. By this time, the traditional indigenous classical learning had already received a setback. The pattern of education as prevalent in Arab countries was gradually being adopted in India also. As a result, maktabs and madrasas came into existence. These institutions used to receive royal patronage. A chain of madrasas opened at several places and followed a set curriculum. The two brothers, Sheikh Abdullah and Sheikh Azizullah, who were specialist in rational science, headed the madrasas at Sambal and Agra. Now, apart from the talent available locally in the country, learned men from Arabia, Persia and Central Asia were also invited to take charge of education in the madrasas. Do you know that the Muslim rulers attempted to reform the curriculum of primary schools also? Some important subjects like arithmetic, mensuration, geometry, astronomy and accountancy along with public administration and agriculture were included in the courses of study for primary education. Though special efforts were made by the ruler to carry out reforms in education, yet scientists did not make much headway. Efforts were made to seek a kind of synthesis between the Indian traditional scientific culture and the prevalent medieval approach to science in other countries. Let us now see what developments took place in various fields during this period. Large workshops called karkhanas were maintained to supply provisions, stores and equipments to royal household and governmental departments. The karkhanas not only worked as manufacturing agencies but also served as centers for technical and vocational training to young people. The Karkhanas trained and turned out artisans and craftspersons in different branches who later on set up their own independent Karkhanas. In the field of mathematics, several works in the field of mathematics were produced during this period. Narayan Pandit, son of Narsimha, was well known for his works in mathematics. Gangadhar in Gujarat wrote Leelavati Vyakhya. There were famous treaties which gave rules for trigonometrical terms like sine, cosine, tangent, and contingent. Nilkant Som Sutwan produced Tantra Samgraha, which also contains rules of trigonometrical functions. Ganesha Daivajna produced Buddhi Vilasini, a commentary on Leelavati, containing a number of illustrations. Krishna of the Valahala family brought out Navankura on the Bij Ganit of Bhaskara II and elaboration of the rules of indeterminate equations of the first and second orders. Nilkan Sastri compiled Tajik, introducing a large number of Persian technical terms. Fezi, at the behest of Akbar, translated Bhaskara's Bij Ganit. Akbar ordered to make mathematics as a subject of study among others in the education system. Nasiruddin at Tusi was another scholar of, of mathematics. Similarly, there were advancements in the field of biology also. Hamsadev 
compiled a work in the field of biology entitled Mirik Paksi Sastra in the 13th century. This gives a general, though not always, a scientific account of some animals and birds of hunting. The Muslim kings, who were warriors and hunters, maintained a fleet of animals such as horses, dogs, cheetahs, and falcons for hunting. Animals, both domesticated as well as wild, have been described. Both Babur and Akbar, in spite of being busy in their political preoccupations and war, found time to study the works. Akbar had a special interest in producing good breeds of domestic animals like elephants and horses. Jahangir, in his work, Tuzuke Jahangiri, recorded his observations and experiments on breeding and hybridization. He described about 36 species of animals. His court artists, especially Mansur, produced elegant and accurate portraitures of animals. Some of these are still preserved in several museums and private collections. As a naturalist, Jahangir was also interested in the study of plants. His court artists have drawn around 57 plants in their floral portraitures. Do you know that in the medieval period, use of paper had begun? An important application of chemistry was in the production of paper. Kashmir, Sialkot, Zafarabad, Patna, Murshidabad, Ahmedabad, Aurangabad, and Mysore became well-known centers of paper production. The paper-making technique was more or less the same throughout the country, differing only in preparation of the pulp from different raw materials. The Mughals knew the technique of production of gunpowder and its use in gunnery. Another application of chemistry. The Indian craftspersons learned the technique in evolved suitable explosive composition. The work Sukraniti, attributed to Sukracharya, contains a description of how gunpowder can be prepared using saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal in different ratios for use in different types of guns. The principal type of fireworks included those which pierce through air, produce sparks of fire, blaze with various colors, and end with explosion. The work Ayni Akbari speaks of the regulation of the perfume office of Akbar. The Atar, that is the perfume of roses, was a popular perfume, which is supposed to have been discovered by Nur Jahan. Now, I'm going to ask you some interesting questions. What subjects were taught in primary schools in the medieval period? Which subject was ordered to be a compulsory subject of study at primary stage by Akbar? What were the two functions of Karkhanas? Now, let us discuss about astronomy. Now, astronomy was another field that flourished during this period. In astronomy, a number of commentaries dealing with the already established astronomical notions appeared. Mahendra Suri, a court astronomer of Emperor Feroz Shah, developed an astronomical instrument. Yantaraj, Parmeswara, and Mahabhaskarya, both in Kerala, were famous families of astronomers and almanac makers. Neil Kant Soma Sutuan produced commentary of Arya Bhatia. Kamalakar studied the Islamic astronomical ideas. He was an authority on Islamic knowledge. Maharaja Savai Jai Singh of Jaipur was a patron of astronomy. He set up the famous astronomical observatories in Delhi, in Ujjain, Varanasi, Mathura, and Jaipur. Now, the Ayurvedic system of medicine did not progress as vigorously as it did in the ancient period because of lack of royal patronage. However, some important treaties on Ayurveda like the Sarangdhara Samhita and Chikitsa Samgraha were compiled during this time. The Sarangdhara Samhita, written in the 13th century, includes use of opium in its material medica and urine examination for diagnostic purposes. The drugs mentioned include metallic preparation of the Rust Chikitsa system and even imported 
drugs. The Ras Chikitsa system dealt principally with a host of mineral medicines, both mercurial and non-mercurial. The Siddha system, mostly prevalent in Tamil Nadu, was attributed to the reputed Siddhas who were supposed to have evolved many life prolonging compositions such as rich in mineral medicines. The Yunani tip system of medicine flourished in India during the medieval period. Ali bin Rabban summarized the whole system of Greek medicine as well as the Indian medical knowledge in the book Firdausi Hikmat. The Yunani medicine system came to India along with the Muslims by about the 11th century and soon found patronage for its growth. Hakim Diya Muhammad compiled a book Majinie Diye incorporating the Arabic, the Persian and the Ayurvedic medical knowledge. Feroz Shah Tughlaq wrote a book Tibbe Feroz Shahi. The Tibbi Aurangzebi dedicated to Aurangzeb is based on Ayurvedic sources. The Musal Jati Dara Shikohi of Nuruddin Muhammad dedicated to Dara Shiko deals with Greek medicines and contains at the end almost the whole of Ayurvedic material medicine in the medieval period. The pattern of agriculture practices were more or less the same as that in early India. Some important changes occurred in the introduction of new crops, trees, as well as horticultural plants by foreign traders. The principal crops were wheat, rice, barley, millets, pulses, oil seeds, cotton, sugar cane, and indigo. The Western Ghats continue to yield black pepper of good quality, and Kashmir maintained its tradition for saffron and fruits. Ginger and cinnamon from Tamil Nadu, cardamom, sandalwood, and coconut from Kerala were becoming increasingly popular. Tobacco, chilies, potato, guava, custard apple, cashew and pineapple were the important plants which were introduced to India during the 16th and 17th centuries. It was during this period that the production of opium from poppy plants began in Malwa and Bihar regions. Improved horticulture methods were adopted with great success. The systematic mango grafting was introduced by the Jesuits of Goa in the middle of 16th century for irrigation, wells, tanks, canals, rahat, charas, and dhinkli charas, a sort of bucket made of leather used to lift water with the help of yoked oxen were used. Persian wheel was used in the Agra region. In the medieval period, agriculture was placed on a solid foundation by the state by introducing a system of land measurement and land classification beneficial both to the rulers as well as the tillers. Now, I'm again back with some more questions for you. Can you name the cities where astronomical observatories were set up by Maharaja Savai Raja Jai Singh, second of Jaipur? Can you name two treaties of Ayurveda written during the medieval period? What is Firdausu Hikmat? Which book brings the Arabic, Persian and Ayurvedic medical knowledge together? Can you name five crops? that was started to be grown in India during the medieval period. Now I am going to sum up this lecture for you and bring out some important points so that you can remember it well. There was a considerable change in the education system in the medieval period. Here the Arabic system was introduced in a big way. Madarsas and maktabs were established all over. The medieval rulers tried to introduce reforms in the field of education. Several works were written in the field of mathematics, chemistry, biology, astronomy, and medicine. Most of the scientific works in this period were commentaries or expositions of the earlier treaties. Several important scientific works in astronomy, medicine, and other sciences were rendered from Sanskrit to Persian or Arabic and from Persian and Arabic to Sanskrit. Now with this, I end up my today's discussion and I shall meet you again in another 
program. Thank you very much. Till then.